to this brief tutorial on the Behringer DeepMind Editor app. In the video I'll be using the PC and the desktop version of the DeepMind, so while the connections and the file locations that I'll look at are for the PC version of the editor, Mac users may well pick up some hints and tips that may well be helpful to them. At the time of recording I'm using version 1.05 of the app on Windows 10 and firmware version 1.12 on the DeepMind. Connection-wise, the app needs to connect to the DeepMind via USB or Wi-Fi. Behringer have a video showing how to connect to a Mac or PC over Wi-Fi, so have a look at that if you need to, but I'll just be using USB. So if you go to Settings, and if you look at the connections, make sure that uh, DeepMind is set in both the uh, input device and the output device. In my case, I'm using a 12D with no keyboard, so if I want to audition sounds while editing, I need to send MIDI from my Modi X keyboard to the regular 5-pin DIN MIDI input of the DeepMind 12. And for that, I'm using the MIDI AUX utility. But you could use your DAW. However, make sure that you're only sending to the regular MIDI inputs on your DAW, as the Behringer app needs to use the USB in and out. Now, before we start saving sounds or edits, it might be a good idea to know the location where sounds are saved on your computer and Behringer don't exactly make it easy for you. On the PC, you need to look for the folder FAT12, that's P-H-A-T-12 on your C drive. So on a Windows 10 PC, uh, I'm looking at Drive C, Users, then your username, obviously my username is there, yours will be displayed on your machine, App Data, Roaming, FAT12, Banks. Bit of a mouthful. So what I suggest you do is you actually uh, make a shortcut of that. So if you uh, go into the previous folder, right click on banks and create shortcut um, and then put that shortcut file onto your desktop uh, and it'll just make it easier to find or put it on a convenient uh, disk location where you can get it at the banks afterwards. If Mac users want to post the location of their save files in a comment below, I'll add it to the video description. Same goes for Windows 7 users. The first thing I'd suggest you do would be to create backups of the banks in the DeepMind so that you needn't worry about overwriting sounds in the future. To do this, simply select a bank and hit Duplicate Bank. This creates a duplicate of that bank on your computer. And if you do this for banks A to H, you'll have a complete backup of all the DeepMind 12 factory patches. So if we scroll down the list of uh, preset banks, uh, I'll scroll down on the right hand side here, you'll see that it says Synth Bank A Copy. Well, it'd be a good idea to rename that to, uh, to a convenient uh, name. So I'm going to uh, select it, hit the Enter key, and that then lets you type the name of your bank. So I'm going to call it uh, Factory Bank A. So once we've done that for all the banks, you'll see that as well as the onboard uh, banks of sound, we've got uh, synth bank A to H, we've got factory banks A to H, which are duplicates of the, uh, of the sounds that are on board the synth. One of the things that I like to do is create a bank of my favorite factory patches to use as starting points to create my own sounds. And to do that, simply create a new bank and rename it. So let's create a new bank and we're going to rename that by clicking on it, selecting the enter key, and we'll call it uh, Best of Factory. You'll notice that when we create a, a new bank, it fills up uh, patches 1 to 1 to 8 with a default program. These we can then safely overwrite and uh, create our Best of Factory patch bank. So if we have a look at the files that have been saved away, you'll see that we have a Best of Factory, and the factory bank A to H have uh, been saved away. All of them are tiny file sizes, 37K, which is quite normal for SysX files. So now we know they're safely saved away and we've created that fresh bank for copying sounds into, we can begin saving or editing individual patches. Now I'd suggest adopting a strategy or a methodology for working with the editor. If we look at the patches folder, you'll see that there's no need for a load or save command as the new bank and the duplicate banks save straight to disk. They're automatically saved. And sounds that you import into your new banks are automatically saved within the bank. An easy way to tell the difference between the sounds that are saved on the Behringer itself and banks of sound saved on the computer is that if you look at uh, the left hand side, you'll see that sounds saved, uh, banks rather saved on the computer have got the uh, keyboard symbol 
and if they haven't got the keyboard symbol it means they're saved away on the computer. Let's call up uh, Synthbank A. You'll see that uh, the smiley symbol means that those sounds are saved away on the Behringer itself. If we call up now the best of factory, you'll see we don't have any smiley symbols. Similarly, factory bank H, there are the sounds saved away on the computer, but no smiley symbol. So as a strategy, I'd suggest visualizing one of these uh, columns on the left-hand side as perhaps uh, the sounds within your deep mind and the column on the right to be sounds within your computer. It could be the other way around, it doesn't really matter. That certainly helps me visualize what's going on. So if I select on the left hand side Synthbank A, and on the right hand side Best of Factory, uh, there's my default programs. I, don't, I can now begin moving sounds, um, the best of sounds, into the best factory banks. I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna do a few pad sounds. So let's take uh, this pad, Rich Rises, DK, and uh, we'll select it. Select a location on the factory bank where we want to copy it to. And you'll notice that copy to the right becomes uh, selected, uh, selectable. We'll click on that and it moves it over to the right hand side. So let's take the next pad sound. So it's Robbie 2. Now, if, if I simply copy to the right again, it'll overwrite Rich Rises. So that's one way to do it if you've made any mistakes. Uh, otherwise, uh, well, let, let's do that. Let's copy it to the right and you'll see it's it's put it in that location. But let's imagine I wanted to uh, put it in the second location. We'll copy it to the right now. And let's do the original pad, Rich Rises, and select the first one and copy to the right. And now we've got both pad sounds. So let's scroll down for another pad. Uh, there's one there, Brassy. We'll select that one and move that to the third location and we'll copy to the right. And there's the file. Now, incidentally, I do get these little square symbols popping up. I don't know if it's a Windows thing or if it's uh, if it's something that's inherent in the system. But uh, basically, it doesn't seem to appear on the window. It doesn't affect the sounds at all, and it doesn't appear in the window of the Behringer DeepMind. In fact, when you transfer sounds back into the DeepMind, that little square disappears entirely. So uh, I think that's just a little little uh, bug that uh, that is quite harmless. So hopefully you can see now how to build up sounds into your own banks. You can take uh, your favorite sounds, create a bank of your own. Those sounds are automatically saved away. You can literally quit the program now and the next time you load up, they will be back in there. There's no need to hit save. There is no save button. Everything is, is moved automatically into that bank. But if we wanted to get that bank into the synth itself, then we can tell the, the fact that there's no keyboard symbol and there's no smiley symbols that these sounds aren't stored in the computer itself. So we would need to copy this bank to the left. So let's um, we've got everything backed up now. If we wanted to put our best of sounds into Synthbank A, we would simply copy to the left and the whole bank will now be sent over. Uh, in our case, it's only three, uh, three programs and then a bunch of default programs, but the whole of them are moved over to bank A. So if we look at Synthbank A, you'll see that we've transferred our best of factory bank into bank A of the uh, DeepMind 12. And if you look, there are the three patches that we've created in our best of, and the rest are the default program. Of course, if we decide this was the wrong thing to do, we can always use our factory bank A and send it back over so that uh, we haven't lost any of the original patches. I've just noticed as well that uh, if you look at the categories, the uh, whilst it's managed to lose that little square symbol next to the brassy KA symbol, it has in fact put these into ambient uh, as being the category rather than pads, which they were before. So that would appear to be a little bug that, uh, that Behringer need to be aware of. Well, I hope that's helped to get you started using the DeepMind 12 editor app. I've obviously only covered the initial setup and the library aspects of the app. There are a lot of videos out there on creating sounds on the DeepMind, but uh, with the basics that we've covered and looked at, you can create your own sounds or load commercial banks in the knowledge that your sounds are backed up safely. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. It's free of charge and it helps me in making more videos like this one in the future. So until the next video, thanks for watching.